What's up, guys? It's John. I got Josh in the gigantic middle of the screen because uh, we are not recording together, get together despite the fact that we live in the same apartment. Because uh, It's easier through Skype because I have no idea what I'm talking about with college basketball yet. True. I hopefully will by the end of the season. I'm sort of a first. Oh, I, my mic is not plugged in. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> what about you? Hey, man. That was a one-time thing. Okay, so yeah. So as I plug my mic in... Long story short, I, uh, not a college basketball fan until recently, so. I've converted him, ah. Yeah. It's okay, because well, Louisiana is not. has converted me pretty much. Yeah. Like, that was the first time I actually watched college basketball, like, as, not as a casual fan. And it, yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah, no, Louisiana's got it wrong. Like, North Carolina and Indiana, the states have, have got it right. College basketball is pretty sweet. So uh, anyway, this is uh, this should be a really fun year. It's gonna be a different year than last year. Last year was kind of different than normal, where you know you saw a lot of big seniors like Buddy Heel, Denzel Valentine, Perry Ellis, kind of dominate the landscape. This year we're going back to freshmen, and oh boy, are there some really good teams with some really good freshmen this year, like uh, like our yep. number one team, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Duke. Great transition. Duke, Duke is, is going to be a very good team this year. That's uh, yes, yes, they sure will. We can both agree on that. So uh, the the way this will be formatted is I will go through who they lost and added and kept, and I will go through some of their fun out of conference games, and we can talk about them a little bit more. So Duke yeah. last year they lost in the Sweet 16 to Oregon as a four seed. That's about expected. They lost the number two overall pick in the NBA draft, Brandon Ingram. Marshall Plumley's gone. Derek Thornton transferred. Uh, but Grayson Allen, Matt Jones, Lemuel Jefferson, Luke Kennard, they stay around. They added four five-star prospects. They added Harry Giles, J- Jason Tatum, Frank Jackson, and Marquise Bolden. One of the best recruiting classes of all time. It's ridiculous. It's like 2012 Kentucky worthy. Um, they play Kansas in the Champions Classic, Michigan State in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. They play Florida. And then they have the Hall of Fame tip-off where they, they play uh, Penn State first round. But... If they win that game, which they should, they'll either play Rhode Island or Cincinnati, who are both fringe top 25 teams, if not top 25 teams. So, Duke, Duke will have their work cut out for them in non-conference. But, uh, yeah, this team, th- I don't know about you, this team reminds me a lot of uh, Duke from two years ago that won the title. It also reminds me a lot of Kentucky from 2012. I mean, you mentioned that earlier. Just, I mean, some guys stayed around, but <laughs> just the, the freshman class alone would be enough to... For me to say that they're a top five team, right? I mean, they lost uh, Brandon Ingram, but I mean, they kept their other good players. They kept their other starters. That's not I mean not, not many teams ever are going to be able to say that, especially in this day and age. Yeah, that's the difference between Coach K and Calipari. I think. Yeah, it's it's relatively impressive that Coach K was able to do that. I think this might be one of his like biggest triumphs, pretty much, yeah. just being able to keep that good of a team. I mean, no, I feel like nobody's talking about him. Like Grayson Allen. Oh, I mean, all right, people are talking about him, but. I don't think people realize he is the ultimate wild card as to whether this team will be a really good Final Four team or one of the best teams we ever watch in basketball. And it's sick. That, that, that's me. what's crazy. <laughs> yeah. it, seems, it seems like their floor is Final Four right now. It does. I mean, I, I know that anything can happen in the tournament, but generally with these kind of otherworldly teams, they don't happen in the Sweet 16 to these kind of teams. Like, I mean, oh, man. This team, and now, they I could don't want to keep but... making like, comparisons to t- Kentucky, but... The Kentucky teams that go far seem like this Duke team. The Kentucky teams that don't do not seem like this Duke team at all. Right. Like, those Kentucky teams that don't go far, and by not going far, I mean, like, losing in the Sweet 16 or something. It, it just seems like those are the teams that they have to restack everywhere. This Duke team isn't doing that. Right. But there's, there's pretty much, I mean, you said Duke from two years ago. I said Kentucky from 2012. But other than that, there's not much we could compare the, this team to. No, there's really not. Maybe 2010 Kentucky, like, as far as like a lesser, it says weird as lesser because that was a really good team. But yeah. I mean, they have eight or nine stars on any other team in the country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're gonna have Emil Jefferson coming off the bench. I think he's started at Duke for the last couple of years, and that's nuts. And those are some good Duke teams too. I mean, if you remember Kentucky's platoon system, this is like Kentucky's platoon, the like the beta version. That was the alpha version. This is the beta. It just might actually be the just finished product. Yeah, this team. I'm not saying this team's going to run the table because the ACC is pretty dang tough. They'll 
they will lose somewhere to a Virginia or to a Kansas or to you know a Louisville or somebody like that. But it's gonna be. Re- they're probably not gonna lose any more than five games this year. Yeah, and this this could be an undefeated team going into the the in the ACC tournament or the NCAA yeah. tournament. I guess. Well, I mean, both same thing. If they much. make the NCAA tournament, that is, <laughs> which they've done for like. I want to say the last 20 plus years. They randomly like self-impose a ban. I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to self-imposed bans later, but. Yep. Well. Yeah, so that's a that's our uh, thing on Duke. Yeah, Duke Should is be pretty good this year. Duke is very good this year. Like, <laughs> they are they're probably the biggest. Well, I mean, they're the biggest title odds since at least 2014 can or 20 yeah 2014 Kentucky. If you want to go beyond that, I don't even I don't even know. Maybe 07 now, like, Florida. Th- this is probably a comparison that's gonna like. Not be controversial, but it's it's kind of gonna sound a little weird. But like, they seem like this year's Alabama team too. Like they were really good last year, and they just like reloaded. Yeah, pretty much. And it, and they they like they normally reload. Okay, well, some of those guys that you normally would think leave stayed. Yeah, and that's so the case they, here. They with reloaded, and then they still had the staying players. And it, it, it reminds me of Alabama's like football defense this year. Yeah. Probably the only time I'm going to make a football reference, but yeah, so there, there it yeah. is. That's the difference between Duke and Kentucky this year. Uh, you want to move on to Kentucky? Yeah, I guess we could. All right. So uh, Kentucky this year, they lose... The SEC East champions in football. They lose, sorry, football. They lose football, sorry. four of their five starters from last year. Jamal Murray, Tyler Ulis, um, Scala Bissier all went to the draft. Marcus Lee transferred... Um, and they also lost Alex Poitras, who had... Uh, was it last year they tore his ACL? I don't remember. I don't yeah, know I... if you'd know, but yeah. Uh, but they keep Isaiah Briscoe. They keep some of their uh, bench guys like Derek Willis, Dominic Hopkins, uh, Isaac Humphreys. But more importantly, they add, uh, just like Duke, they add four five-star prospects. Uh, they add power forward Bam Adebayo, uh, point guard De'Aaron Fox, power forward Wenyan Gabriel, and shooting guard Malik Monk, who they stole from Arkansas. And uh, out of conference, they play Michigan State in the Champions Classic. They play UCLA. They play North Carolina and Louisville, those last two on the road. So, uh, like like Duke, Kentucky will definitely be tested. They don't play in a tournament, though. But, yeah, Kentucky. Yeah, um, Kentucky might be one of the few teams that could beat Duke this year. I, I think I think Kentucky's season this year is going to rely on Isaiah Briscoe. I think he could have, he, he has the potential to be one of the best players in the country, and it's, it's whether he puts that together or not. I mean, yeah. he he looked like a freshman last year, like a freshman should look, not an actual normal yeah. college basketball freshman. Uh, that was a really high recruit, but he just looked like a freshman. Looked like he needed a few years, maybe. He also maybe needed like to work on free throws. Year. That's the thing that he needed to do. Yeah, but I I think he he has the potential to be one of the best players in the country. And if if he if he puts it together, watch out for this Kentucky team. Yeah, this uh this is not going to be two years ago's Kentucky team. By the way, this team last year they were a four seed and they lost in the round of thirty two to Indiana. Uh, I think they'll be better than last year's team, but this won't be twenty twelve Kentucky. This won't be twenty fourteen Kentucky. This probably won't be twenty ten Kentucky. I would expect. I think they're. I think this team's a little overrated too. I would probably put them at four or five, but uh. I mean, this this still definitely a one seed upside and downside. Maybe another four seed like they like they had last year. But uh, yeah, I th- I, th- I think they're probably barring anything amazing. Like, I mean, I guess miraculous by any other team. Uh, I think they're an elite eight team with potential to be a final four, maybe even a championship team. Oh, I think this team could definitely win a championship, no doubt. Yeah, I I, I think elite eight should be. At least their goal, like get there and then. I mean, their goal is a championship. Their Every yeah, season, their goal is a championship. Uh, I, I, mean, I guess, like what I think of them is going to be at least an elite eight team. Like, yeah, I think if if they go, if they don't go to the elite eight, it'll be a kind of a upsetting season for Kentucky. Yeah, yeah it'd be two in a row then, at that point. That and Drake. Not sure if he's still a fan of them, but <laughs> I don't know. Still it, a Villanova fan. Yeah, he he's he Drake changes with the I don't want a diss track about me. <laughs> The world's not ready for the fire I spit at Drake if he puts a diss track out. You'd be want to know part two. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe slightly better than Meek Mill, but yeah. So Kentucky basically, basically almost the exact same team as last year. Hopefully, hopefully their biggest prospect. Well, I guess I don't. I don't know. I guess Adebayo and Fox are both pretty huge, but uh, last year's team was defined by Scal kind of busting, and uh, if this year they can they can probably afford for one of their guys to bust but if two of the four five stars bust then this team's gonna have a pretty much a similar team to the last year 
without that guy without that guy like Tyler Eulis to kind of rough him into shape. So, uh, Kentucky, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they yeah, are. They're good. They're, they're always here. They're always here under John Calipari. All right. Much, yeah. Let's move on to the number three team in America, the, uh, the ever-consistent Kansas Jayhawks. I believe last year was their 11th season in a row in which they won the Big 12 uh, regular season. Unbelievable. That's one of the craziest streaks in sports, in my opinion. Bill Self has been remarkably consistent. And right this year, it looks like it'll be 12 because uh, there's no Big 12 teams uh, ranked Texas. in the top 19 but this, but Kansas. They've got some fringe top 25 teams later on down, but this will be the last time we talk about the Big 12 for a while. This is yeah, uh, You definitely think they're expected to win the Big 12 championship again this year. Yeah, definitely. Which they should be. So, uh, so they lost Perry Ellis, who was their big... Uh, their big uh, rock, I guess, last year. Uh, Wayne Selden was a surprise declaration for the draft as a junior. Uh, they also lost, she- lost Sheik Diallo, who was pretty much a bust from last year, but he was still a big prospect. It would have been- it would have helped to have him. But uh, they keep Frank Mason. They keep Devontae Graham, that backcourt duo. Landon Lucas stays around in the front court, and they bring uh, they bring back Svi Mikheliuk, the Ukrainian wild card shooting guard. Uh, they they add a four star prospect in Udoka uh, as a bouquet at center, but the biggest addition is the I want to say number three prospect in the land, Josh Jackson at small forward, and, and he is really going to define this team. Um, I can see this team working out a lot like uh, Kansas from a couple years ago with Andrew Wiggins, um, or from a couple years before that with Thomas Robinson if you remember that. But uh, yeah, this Kansas team I would put it at number two personally. Uh, they have some tough games out of conference. They play Indiana and in, tomorrow actually in Hawaii. They play Duke in the Champions Classic. They play in the CBE Hall of Hall of Fame Hall of Fame Classic with UAB Georgia and George Washington. And they have a couple other interesting games against Stanford, Davidson, Nebraska, etc. But uh, yeah, this 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 Kansas team just feels like a champion team to me. If Duke doesn't win it, they would be my second guess. Yeah, the problem is Kansas had plenty of what seems like championship teams in the last, I guess, eight years since they won in 2008. Yeah, and, uh, last year was they, one of them, and they lost to in the Elite Eight to yeah. Villanova. I mean, Bill Self's a great coach, but he just, they haven't seemed to be able to put it together in the uh, postseason, but mm-hmm. should be good this year. I, they should be a Final Four team. They should uh, possibly make the championship. Like, like John, I think they're the second best team in the country behind Duke. Yeah. And, uh, I really like this Kansas team, but uh, it's, it just always seems like Kansas is that team that's there, but you know they're not going to do anything come uh, come the tournament. Yeah, and by maybe. not doing anything, I mean make it to the Final Four and lose. Or yeah. Fu- they, just, they seem like they fall like one round short than they normally should. Fun fact, Kansas is actually, in the last eight years since they won the championship, they've only made the Final Four once. And, uh, you know, they've won the Big 12 outright every season. This is This Kansas team is... I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to think of a comparison for them. Maybe maybe Oregon Ducks of uh, football, at least from two thousand nine to twenty fourteen. They just never really they never really made it to the big game. And like, like I said, they've only done it once in the last eight years. And uh, Josh Dax- Jackson is definitely a good enough prospect, though, that he could lead them. And I think I think Frank Mason is one of one of my favorite players in the country. He's he's a pretty good point. He's very dependable. I think he's uh, he's. And that's what I like out of a point guard for a team like this. He doesn't he's not the leader, and he doesn't need to be. But he puts up he puts up points, he puts up dimes, and he does what he needs to do. Yeah, I just think this is gonna be a fun game until they get to the final four and lose to some team. Maybe. Which final four? You said one time since they won their championship, so final four would be a pretty good season for them. Yeah, with Josh Jackson, I'm sure they'd like more, but you know. Yeah, but they, they they could get that more. They have a talent enough roster. Yeah, they have the they have the bench to do it too. They've got a relatively yeah, my, good team. Um, my championship at the moment, like if, if I had to fill out a bracket today, would be a uh, Duke Kansas. Yeah, I probably so, have to agree. As boring as it is, I would, my my, I my way too early bracket. Yeah, I I'll talk about my other two Final Four teams in a minute, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to one of those Final Four teams, uh, the reigning champion Villanova Wildcats. <laughs> Uh, this team actually, uh, I I don't know what because uh, it's because of the seven month layover. I assumed Villanova had lost a lot, but actually they don't really. 
Uh, out of their big like seven seven man rotation from last year, they keep five of the seven and Chris Jenkins, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Phil Booth, Michael Bridges. They lose my boy Ryan Archidiacono. They lose Daniel Ocho- Ochefu. But they add a five star power forward in Amari Spellman. It's their second year straight year with a five star. And they also get a transfer from Fordham and Eric Pascal. Uh, of course they won the championship last year. Uh, out of conference they'll play Purdue. That's kind of their big their big game. They're playing the Gildan Charleston Classic with a couple of other not so great teams. And they also play Notre Dame. That's a wild card team and a half right there. And uh, so yeah, there's Villanova in a, in a heartbeat. I would I would put them in my Final Four personally. Not in their, not my championship just because there's better teams, but uh, it should be a really fun dynamic. Yeah, I think they're gonna have a, another good team. Like I, I hadn't seen a lot of Villanova until the the tournament last year, but Josh Hart, he is John, very Josh good. Hart was a very impressive player in the tournament, and I mean if he, if he could keep that up. They don't need Archie Diakono. He could be a top three returning player in the country alongside Grayson Allen or I don't know who else it would be, but he's... Yeah, jo- Josh Hart is is really good, and that, that Villanova team is really talented. And this year, I just... I, th- I honestly think this year's team could be better than last year's, at least coming into the season. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so Villanova should be, should be there. I... I don't think they get. To, they're not in my final four, but they're a great team. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people are forgetting about Jalen Brunson, but this is a guy that was a five star prospect last year. He didn't. He didn't really have a huge season, but that's because he didn't really need to. He came off the bench a lot, and uh, he did what he needed to do. But uh, he could step up and be that leader that Ryan Archdiakono was last year. And uh, Chris Jenkins should have a pretty good season too. Yeah, the man who sank the sank the buzzer beater. We shall see. I'm excited. Glad he did. I'm excited for this Villanova team. Among amongst all these team, these freshman laden teams, we have, you know, this team and the next team we'll talk about as you know teams with a bunch of upperclassmen that um, you know, it'll be a fun dynamic I think. So uh, why don't we talk about that next team right now? We got the Oregon Ducks as they as they fall in in football, they have risen to the top in basketball. The okay. worst court in uh, college basketball <laughs> yeah. as well. They have a good coach, though, Coach Dana Altman, uh, no matter what you think about his the whole rape thing from a couple years ago. So uh, Oregon Oregon was an Elite Eight team last year. They got beat by Buddy Heald in the Elite Eight. But uh, this time around, they uh, much like Villanova, they keep uh, five of their seven, uh, rotation, seven-man rotation from last year. Elgin Cook's gone and Dwayne Benjamin's gone, but... Dylan Brooks stays around, which is a big deal. They also keep Tyler Dorsey, Chris Boucher, Jordan Bell, Casey Benson. Uh, they keep Dylan Ennis, the transfer from Villanova, brother of Tyler Ennis. They had a couple four-stars, Keith Smith, Peyton Pritchard, uh, Michael Cage Jr. Uh, as far as they're out of conference, they will be tested. They get Baylor on the road. They play Valpo, Georgetown, Alabama as kind of fringe top 50 teams. Could be interesting, could be not. Uh, but their big bellwether is that they play in the Maui Invitational, which has some really good teams that we'll talk about later. Uh, they got Wisconsin, UNC, UConn, as well as Tennessee, Georgetown, Oklahoma State. So this is a fun. This this should be a fun slate for the Ducks. Yeah, I, I personally, Chris Boucher is he's some fun, some fun quality H two O, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a really good like from what I've seen of him last year. He was really he impressed me. Dude swats. I watched him. He is uh he's like he's like Nerlens Noel or Anthony Davis at Kentucky as far as the shot blocking ability. Yeah, and I, I think like he's relatively underrated. Oh yeah, definitely. As I watched North Carolina almost take a kickoff to the house and uh Oh yeah, I should probably have that game on. Oh well. Yeah, but Oregon just they they're one of my top, one of my final four teams right now. I mean I mean I mean mm-hmm. I mean I, I coming into this not knowing a lot and then hearing John talking about him and being like oh well, maybe they are pretty good but this just feels like an Oregon year just... yeah I don't have them in my final four personally but I there's definitely reason to be optimistic if you're uh if you're a fan of the Ducks and uh yeah they coach Dana Altman continues to create a really good team speaking of really good teams let's move last on year. yeah let's move on to the North Carolina Tar Heels quite Quite the uh, polarizing team, in my opinion. I think me and you have the same opinion. 
Uh, so from so last year they made the well, championship. Probably made from you, honestly. Uh, last year they made the championship and they lost to Villanova on the heartbreaker. Uh, they lose their best two players, their leader in Marcus Page and their big their big man in Bryce Johnson. Uh, they keep they keep quite a bit though. I think people don't realize that Kennedy Meeks stays around. Justin Jackson, uh, Nate Britt, Joel Berry, Isaiah Hicks. Uh, Theo Pinson is also staying, but he's gonna he's gonna miss a lot of the season. I forget exactly what injury he had, but he had a pretty big injury. Uh, they do add a five star center and Tony Bradley as well as a, a high four star uh, shooting guard in Seventh Woods. Uh, they play in Maui. That that the definitely the preseason tournament of the year. They still play Indiana. There's not many others that are good. Yeah. So. They play Indiana and Kentucky. The Indiana game comes on the road in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And, uh, yeah, I, I personally would not have this team in the top ten. Uh, it's got, you know, I would say Final Four ceiling. This team could do something depending on if somebody takes the lead and becomes that leader that Marcus Page was last year. But it's hard to see. I don't know who it would be. Yeah, I personally think this feels like one of those four C Kentucky teams. I could, dude, I can see that, that a lot actually. That, that you, you just know, like when the, when the tournament comes around, they're going to be good. But it's going to be whether a team can stop them before they get really far, and right. that's just basically what I see from this North Carolina team with a four seed, maybe five seed. But yeah, yeah, I I, I think this team is good, and I, Roy Williams is definitely one of the best coaches in college basketball. Absolutely, and if anyone can take a decent team. And make them good. It's probably him or Coach K. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the, probably the worst team in the top ten. What, what, maybe. Well, no, probably the worst team between them and Duke this year. Definitely the worst team. Oh but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those games should be fun again, though. One thing to definitely keep an eye out on is the uh, the, the potential of a postseason ban here. I'm not saying it will happen, but. Uh, you know, it seems very similar to Louisville from last year. You know, the NCAA could come down and just be like, hey, your academics are kind of messed up and you're just not going to the tournament this year. Now, I don't know that whether that'd be a blessing in disguise for the Tar Heels or not because I don't know if this year's a championship winning team, but it would definitely still sting for those seniors. And uh, I'm not saying it'll happen, but, uh, you know, it's happened the last couple of years with Louisville last year and with Syracuse the year before. So it's not entirely unprecedented that it could happen, but uh, I'm not but, sure. It will. If, it, if if that does happen, it could feel like one of those wasted talent type years mm-hmm. where players just they stayed at UNC one year, and also, I mean that if if that ban does come, that could set them up nicely for next year. If players want to um, they want to make their mark in the tournament and stuff, and they decide to stay. Like those really right. good players decide to stay again. Yeah, I forget exactly how many seniors they have this year, but. Uh, you know they'll lose them, but they should get together another recruiting class. That would have yeah. offset it. I would, well, they, I would if, put those they, chances. If they get the ban and they, they keep all their recruits from this year, mm-hmm. and then bring in their recruiting class from next year, they should be really good next year. Yeah, I would put their their possibility of a ban at like twenty percent right now. You know, I'm not saying it will happen. I'm kind of far from it, but I would say definitely keep an eye out. The NCAA has done stranger. So. They have, they have for sure. And teams have done stranger too, because the last two years of Louisville and Syracuse they were self-inflicted, uh, <laughs> as uh, controversial as the Syracuse one was. But uh, that's a topic for another day. But uh, yeah, there's North Carolina. Neither of us have them in our Final Four, right? No, I, I think they're a Sweet 16, maybe Elite 18. They're yeah. losing in like an overtime game against a, a really good team. Should be a fun a, team though. Game. This team should be a lot more uh, backcourt based than last year's team. Uh, just because they don't have a Bryce Johnson this year, but Bryce listen. Johnson wasn't insane last he's a, year. He's an animal, dude. He was a he was a top five player in the country, in my opinion. So uh, let's move on to the number seven team. This is another team I'm kind of lower on as far as being a top ten team, but uh, it's the Xavier Musketeers. And. Uh, yeah, they uh they out of their seven man uh, rotation from last year, they keep four of them. Uh, Jalen Reynolds left early for the draft. They also graduate Remy Abel and James Farr, but uh, a bit a big uh, you know a key guy to bring back was Trayvon Blewett. He's their most promising player. Edmund Sumner comes back. JP Makura comes back. Miles Davis comes back, but he does have a, a weird domestic violence charge hanging over his head. Uh, they also add a couple of uh, grad transfers from the. 
the Miak, they bring back Rash- or they bring uh, Rashid Gaston from uh, Norfolk and Malcolm Bernard from Florida A and M. Also had a couple of four stars in Quentin Gooden and Tyreek Jones. Uh, they will be playing in the Tire Pros Invitational with teams such as Clemson, Oklahoma, uh, Northern Iowa, a couple teams like that. They also have road games against Baylor and Colorado. So not toughest uh, uh, out of conference slate, but you know we'll we'll get to see what the Musketeers are made of. Yeah, we definitely will. Um, a Big E school, the Big E should be pretty good this year. Yeah. Um, I think John was reading names off of me earlier, and I was like, "Damn, this is actually going to be a pretty good conference." And I mean, what was Providence eight? Providence was eight. Providence does lose a lot from last year, but still. Yeah, but I mean, you, I, you'd expect them to still be pretty decent. Xavier, if they they remind me a lot of that Villanova team last year. Yeah. Just like start starting out decently ranked, like everyone knew they were going to be good, and then I mean, just answering the bell pretty much. And I think Xavier's going to do that. I don't see him as a championship team, but no one saw Villanova as a championship team at this time last year either. No, and that's because you you know you saw Villanova fail in the tournament time and time again. And this Xavier team, they fell in the round of 32 last year. They lost in a buzzer beater to Wisconsin. And, uh, yeah, this... I, I'm not going to say I'm low on Xavier, but uh, last year the reason they got so such hype around him is because they started really strong... And they came out on fire and ended up looking like a really good team immediately. And I don't see that this year just because I don't think they have the schedule for it. And uh, I think they could end up as a you know three or four seed Sweet 16 team, but I don't think this team has high championship odds in my opinion. No, I, I, I honestly don't think they do either, but I, th- I think they're one of those teams that should be there. Like Their oh, battle yeah. with Villanova should be fun this season, and... Even their battle to be the best team in Cincinnati, that could be pretty fun. Yeah, Cincinnati. Should have I wish those two teams team still played constantly, because uh, unless I missed it, they do not play this year. Uh, because that, that stupid 2012 game, they friggin' ruined everything. Stupid Yancey Gates and ugh, I'm still Ron mad. Artest. <laughs> he basically, he basically might as well have been Ron Artest soccer punching that guy. But, uh, yeah. yeah, they still haven't brought back yeah, the rivalry. Yeah, Xavier, Xavier, the Musketeers should be pretty decent. Yep. So you do not have them in your Final Four, right? I do not. Okay, I don't either. So we've only gotten to two years, right? Um. You said Duke and Kansas were in your Final Four. Yeah. Or did you say, no, I said Nova. Did you say Oregon was in your Final Four? You may have, actually. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, well, I'm we'll keeping see. track of mine. I, I, I'm, like, gearing myself to only pick one more Final Four, so... Okay, so we'll say Oregon was your third team, because I remember you said something yeah, about that. Yeah, I guess. That. All right. So, uh, number eight team in the land, the Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, the Wahoos. Uh, they lost potentially their biggest program guy in Malcolm Brogdon since Ralph Sampson played for him in the 80s. Uh, Mike toby has gone, Anthony Gill's gone... Uh, they bring back London Perantes. He'll be the he'll be the leader of this team. Isaiah Wilkins, Devon Hall, Mariel Shayok come back, uh, but they add their their first five star prospect under Tony Bennett's coaching run and Kyle Guy. Uh, he's a lower five star, but still could definitely affect this team immediately. They add some four stars in Jay Huff, DeAndre Hunter, Ty Jerome, but uh, their biggest addition has to be the transfer from Memphis, Austin Nichols. He should come in and make this team extremely productive immediately. He seems like a perfect fit for this team, uh, who still hasn't gotten to a Final Four under Virginia or under Tony Bennett. Despite, I think they've had they've been a th- uh, like a one seed two of the last three or four years, and they've been a two seed the other couple. And uh, they lost in the Elite Eight last year to Syracuse in quite dubious fashion. Uh, this year they play Ohio State in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They play West Virginia. They play at Cal. They play in the Emerald Coast Classic with uh, against Iowa in the first round, and they also play Providence or Memphis in the championship if they beat Iowa. So, uh, yeah, that's Virginia this year. Should be really defensive once again. Yeah, and Virginia is always fun basketball to watch if you like defensive teams. Yeah, the, if Shamil well, was a college year, basketball of, fan, this would be his team. <laughs> yeah, last year, one of you know my, fa- my favorite teams to watch just because of how gritty they were and how, I mean, they fought. They fought oh, yeah. every play. And yeah. Even as a fan of a team in the same conference, I could respect Virginia for sure. Yeah, we know how much John likes Duke, but, I mean, Virginia. <laughs> Virginia just, I mean, I, I think they're, 
maybe not as good as that team was last year, but probably not. I, just because they lose, I think Brogdon. they're set up to be to be a very good team once again in that tough ACC. Yeah, this team looks like you know maybe number two seed uh, Elite Eight written all over them once again. I kind of want to see Tony Bennett go to the Final Four, but I don't think it happens this year. Do you? No, I don't. Okay. All right, well, yeah. Well, Virginia should be fun once again, that's for sure. They always are. Uh, anyway, next up, the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, so, lots of question marks around this team, uh, mostly because of their coaching situation. Uh, Greg... Last year, uh, they really struggled out of conference, uh, and Bo Ryan ended up uh, retiring abruptly midway through the season. Uh, he named Greg Gard as his coaching replacement. He Greg Gard was the guy that Bo Ryan wanted, but he's not the guy that Wisconsin wanted. But Greg Gard ended up co- having such a remarkable coaching job that uh, they basically had no choice but to keep him. Uh, they have this streak still alive, I believe, of... Yeah, they've been top four in the Big Ten, I want to say, every year since, like, 2001 or something crazy. Uh, so, a very much Kansas-like streak there. Uh, they keep pretty much everybody from last year. Uh, they lose a couple walk-ons. They don't really add anybody, but Nigel Hayes is back. Bronson Koenig is back. Ethan Hatt, Vito Brown, Zach Showalter, Jordan Hill, Khalil Iverson. All of them are back, and they have a hell of an out-of-conference schedule. They play at Creighton. They play Syracuse in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. They play at Marquette, they play versus Oklahoma, and they play in Maui. Uh, I forget who the first team they play is, but this team, we will see what this team is made of immediately. And uh, I'm excited to see it. Uh, and it's actually Tennessee is the first team they play in the Maui Invitational. So uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this team? I personally don't, I mean, I think they're a top 15 team. I wouldn't say they're a top 10 team. I like, and I, I don't really go into the seasons... You know, I've, I've been a casual fan right. of recent times. This year I'm getting more serious, but I, I just always seem like I didn't like Wisconsin as much as I probably should have. Yeah, maybe it's their, maybe like they play – it's because they play a very ugly style of, of basketball, much like Virginia. Yeah, as the train rolls in, I don't think Wisconsin's <laughs> train's going to be rolling this year. Okay. this uh, I think this is like the first team that we've disagreed about. I actually have Wisconsin as my fourth Final Four team. Uh, because they do return a lot. Nigel Hayes and Bronson Koenig. Uh, Hayes kind of struggled with his shot for a bit of last year, but Bronson Koenig is such a silky smooth shot. He reminds me... I, I don't even know who I would compare him to. But, uh, I mean, he's a guy with a really good three-point shot. That's kind of all you need to know. And he can... I guess I would, re- I would compare him to... Uh, well, the guy from Michigan, the white guy. The, the guy with the really funny nickname in the NBA. You know, what I'm oh, I know what you're talking like about. Sauce Castilla or something. What, whatever the hell his name was. It's. I'm, oh, I was thinking of uh, Nick Stauskas. That's okay. what I'm thinking of. Nick Stauskas is. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I yeah. forget what his name was because it was like a closed captioning error or something. That's who he remi- reminds me of this year is somebody who goes from being a really good three point sh- specialist to uh, to you know being able to you know create his own shot and even drop some dimes. I could see this Wisconsin team being really good. Last year, they lost in the Sweet 16 to Notre Dame, and I, I have this team being the Final Four. I don't know if this is a championship-winning team, but Wisconsin fans would be happy with the Final Four, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry for laughing a little. I uh, I clicked on an internet ad. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll happen. And it's like, can you name the college football team by the logo? And, like, it was Texas's logo, and I said the Texas Longhorns or the Oklahoma Longhorns. I was like, that's pretty funny. I go to the next one. It's Alabama's logo. It says the Alabama Crimson Tide or the Atlanta Braves. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. That's a tough one if you don't know, like, yeah, you've seen the two logos but, like, aren't really sure. Even as somebody who's a fan of both of those teams, I still confuse them every now and then. Like, see a bumper sticker. I'm like, hey, Atlanta Braves. Oh, wait, no, never mind. That's just Bama. That's not Okay, the, the, this is this is even worse. It's the Florida's logo. It says the Florida Gators are the Mississippi Crocodiles. <laughs> what the hell? There's no crocodiles in Mississippi. <laughs> This is, it sounds like just a, let's see, do you know the real college football team? Okay. Anyway, let's move on. We've got, uh, yeah. next up we got the Arizona Wildcats. Wildcats. Another team I think the polls are under ranking here. This, I think is, I think this is actually the best team in the Pac-12 personally. Uh, they lose t- uh, a couple seniors from last year. They lose Ryan Anderson, Mark Tollefson, Caleb Tarzewski, Gabe York. 
Uh, but they keep Alonzo Trier, which I don't know if they were counting on, but uh, that's a big big guy to keep around. Kadeem Allen and Dusan Ristich come back. And they had uh, three five stars in point guard Kobe Simmons, uh, shooting guard Raul Atkins, and the Finnish center Laurie Markinen. I am really excited about that guy. He's one of my favorite prospects for sure. And uh, this Arizona team lost in the round of 64 last year to Wichita State, which was basically a three seed disguised as an 11 seed. And, uh, this year they have a typical out of conference stretch where they play at Michigan State, at Texas A&M. They play Gonzaga, as as I think they have the past couple years. They play in the Las Vegas Invitational against Santa Clara in the first round. If they win that, they'll play their Vanier Butler. That's not really all that important of a tournament, but it's one they should win. But uh, you know. This will be a team well worth keeping an eye on, I think. Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, they're, they're going to be good, but I, I I told you this a few days ago. I just mm-hmm. never see, feel like Arizona's a good team. Like, I always feel like they're a good team, but I never feel like they're, you know... Going to win a championship? I, I, I never feel like they're good enough to get over the hump. It always feels like there's somebody the better. Four. Yeah, I, I, I was telling... So, they're not my Final Four team, but once again, they should have a good good year and a mm-hmm. good team. It should be better than yet last year, I think. Oh, definitely. Yep. I really want Sean Miller to get to a Final Four at some point. He's a he's he's a he seems like a good dude. He's a very good coach, but uh, I don't think this is going to be the year for him. Although I I wouldn't be surprised if it was personally. All right. Um, I think we'll actually put a cut in the video here. Um, it's we're about. 35 minutes in so we'll do we'll have a separate video for the teams 11 through 25 so uh hope you guys enjoyed this uh this video like and subscribe if you like and wish to subscribe and uh watch the next uh video if you'd like yeah it should come up on screen now Woo. it's probably not gonna happen